uh, the transformation occurs in which you you're no longer experiencing yourself uh, in the in the uh, in the context or the or in, in the shape of a personality right in the confines of a personality you're no longer experiencing yourself that way you're experiencing yourself as awareness itself and it's a complete completely different reality it's a completely different world the thing about it that is most uh, is, is, is most outstanding is that um, everything clears up by itself there's no longer any need to do anything, to change anything. There's no longer any resistance to the way things are. Everything, it's an amazing transformation because without anything changing, everything is right. Without ev anything changing, everything is perfect the way it is. And the experience you're having of it is you're in relationship to it in a harmonious way. Because not only is it perfect the way it is, but you are that. You are you are perfect as part of the way it is perfect if that makes any sense you know it's all it all becomes one same thing that is uh, perfectly working all the time and that's so dramatically different from the, what it's like to be living in the confines of a personality right and seeing things from that place you know teachers Teachers who teach about these things talk from that experience. You know, they're talking from that experience and they're trying to get people to see the possibility in their own experience so, so they can begin to move toward it, right? And so you could say that they're talking in terms of a, of, of a there. You could say that you're here and it's there, right? Like you're here and the possibility is there. You're here and being awake and enlightened and in the natural state is there, right? So that's the way it occurs to people when you first hear about it. You know, well, I'm here and it's there and the teacher's talking about the there, right? But the interesting thing about it is that it's the opposite. It's the opposite. And the reality of it is, that as you eventually see clearly what's going on, you realize that no, the reality, it is, the reality of it is that you're there and it's here. You follow me? When you first hear it, you think, no, it's there and I'm here, right? I am in the reality that I'm experiencing and I'm hearing about another reality that's there, but I'm here. And as you continue to learn about it and you continue to meditate and you continue to see the truth of it, you begin to see that no, you're there, right? In other words, you're in, in, in the person that you're being, you're there, you're away from yourself. You're away from here. Here is you. Here is awareness itself. Here is home. Here is the truth. Here is what's always here. And the, 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 the source of suffering for most of humanity is that, that most of humanity is there, not here. Right? There is in your head. There is stuck in thought, right? There is living in the past. There is living in the future, right? There is experiencing a life that for the most part is not real and is not happening. That's there. So you're actually there, not here. And when you start to reorganize yourself where you see it clearly that way, then the name of the game is to come home. The name of the game is to be here instead of there. And the way that happens is you start to pay attention, and this is where meditation comes in. You develop the ability to consistently pay attention to how there you are, you see. You're beginning the ability, you develop the ability to pay attention consistently to how there you are, that you're there, not here. That you're not in your life, you're, you're not in your life, you're thinking about your life. Right? You're not in your life, you're reacting to life, right? You're not in your life, you're imagining what's happening, which is the past or the future, right? So most human beings spend their life there, spend their life not in their life, you know? Muji has a, a, a humorous thing that he talks about sometimes, and he says he was walking along a canal, and he noticed on the other side of the canal was a, an old friend of his. Uh, and he yelled over and said, hey, hey, hey. And the friend said, oh, hey, 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 good to see you, good to see you, long time. And so Muji yelled to him, how do, how do I get over there? And the guy yelled back, you are over there. 
<laughs> and that's kind of how it is, right? That you think, you think you're, you're there as a here, right? But no, you're here as a there. <laughs> so these ways of talking about it can be helpful if you see that they're really reflecting the way it's, what's actually going on, right? So you can get an orientation and understand what the teachers and the masters say, and they say, no, freedom is not freedom for you, it's from you. It's, it's freedom from who you've been being that's a there, not a here, right? Because a personality is not the experience of what you are naturally as awareness, it's something other than that. That's a there. At some point, if you pay attention consistently and you do, your, do, do the meditation consistently, right, it starts to come together. And you start to realize, you know, that meditation is the experience of truth. That's what it allows. It allows you to have the experience of truth. So now the teaching is not something you're just hearing and understanding and learning about, like information you're taking on, right, but it becomes something you're now seeing. That's the transformation. It becomes something that you're now seeing as you're meditating and as you're going through your life. You're seeing that that's the case, right? And then the next step, so that's mindful. When you're seeing things as they are, that's mindful. That's being aware, right? And then the next step is to be that awareness. So you're seeing from that awareness, and that makes a big difference, right? And then the next step is to understand that the awareness that you're seeing from is you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it'll, it, will, it, it will continue to open up and evolve in a natural way, right? Because the truth has its own movement, you know, flowers, you know, flowers open up, the seasons change, things die, things come back to life, you know. This is all already happening. All you're, all you're doing is joining. <laughs> all you're doing is merging with what's already happening. And if you merge with what's already happening, then it's inevitable that enlightenment, awareness, awakeness, aliveness, it's inevitable that that will gradually flower that will gradually come. All you have to do is stay in the process, keep yourself open, right? Understand, and it's very important to understand that your mind is going to challenge this. Your mind is going to produce doubt. It's going to produce fear, right? It's going to warn you, you know? Be, and and it's, it's not, it's, the mind is not conscious, right? The mind's not conscious. It's, 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 a, it's a program, right? It's, it's, a, it's a, a mental state, it's a program. The brain is programmed, the mind is programmed, and it's, it's actually good, it's actually working in your favor, right? Because when you start to recognize awareness and you start to move toward awareness, right? Uh, it's often spoken of by teachers when teachers say, well, the mind's not your friend, the mind's going to throw up barriers, the mind's going to try and stop you from meditating, the mind's going to uh, bring uh, uh, emotional storms, right? Tsunamis, emotional tsunamis, mind attacks, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, depression, right? The mind's going to throw up all these things to pull you back into being a person, right? Pull you back into the familiar place of being a person, right? And so it's easy to then conceive of the mind as a negative entity, you know, that the mind's bad. No. No, the mind's not bad. The mind's neutral. It doesn't have its own consciousness. It's a program that was programmed for you to survive as a person. And so when you start to leave the experience of being a person and start to move towards experiencing yourself as awareness, it's going to run the programs designed to get you back. And so in a real sense, it's actually supporting the process, right? supports the process because if you understand what's actually going on you realize that every time I fall back into being a person every time I fall back into being small into being small-minded in a state of mind every time I fall back into that right the mind's gonna bite you because the mind is gonna try and bring keep bring you totally back into that state and have you forget about everything else right and so, if you understand the way things work, you understand that the bite is a wake-up call. You know, when you are experiencing a state of mind, when you're experiencing uh, fear, panic, anxiety, and so forth, or, or even depression, when you're experiencing that, it's a way that the system is signaling you, right, that you are in the person state. It's the person that has those experiences, right? 
So it's actually supporting you because you have to get completely grounded and seated in the reality of your consciousness to be free from that. The mind cannot attack awareness. This is, this is very important to understand. The mind cannot attack awareness. The mind can only attack you when you're in the state of being a person. Awareness, as you come to see awareness and know awareness and become familiar with awareness, you come to see awareness is ineffable. The awareness can't be attacked. There's nothing to attack in awareness, right? There's no thing there. There's nothing to attack in awareness. It allows everything to happen the way it's happening, right? It's the ultimate, ju uh, it's the ultimate cosmic judo, right? It's the ultimate cosmic martial art, right? Because nothing can affect it. It, it, it goes, it allows everything to happen so nothing can attack it, right? But a person doesn't allow, you see, a person doesn't allow everything to happen and that makes you vulnerable, right? That makes you attackable, right? Because whatever you don't allow to happen, right, is what you will resist and what you will struggle with and what you will fight against and what you will argue with, right? And that's called suffering. It's really that simple. So when the mind attempts to attack, when you're in the process of waking up, when the mind attempts to attack, if you see it for what it is, right, you just let it do what it's doing and realize that there's, it does, there's nothing necessary to do. You don't have to resist it. You don't have to try and control it. It'll run out of gas on its own. You understand? If you don't feed the dog, it'll die. So when you see that, that's when you're, that's when you're seeing it from awareness and you realize, oh, I don't need to do anything because this isn't what's, what's happening isn't real. I don't have to fight it. It doesn't matter what feelings come up or thoughts come up. I don't have to fight it. And if you begin to recognize it that way, and you begin to have that view of it, right, it will, it will die its own natural death. It will stop, it'll, it'll become weaker and weaker because thoughts and emotions depend on your attention, don't they? Right? If you're angry and you, and you keep your attention in the anger, right, you keep having angry thoughts, right, it can go on forever. Right? There are people who are going to die angry. It can go on forever. Right? You can have anger toward a person and if you don't let it go, if you keep feeding it, right, it'll keep you angry and keep you separate and distant from that person and keep your story about everything going. Right? But if you withdraw attention from it, right, you can do this, you can experiment with this yourself. Whenever you experience anger, when you experience the emotion anger, you'll notice that there are thoughts about what you're angry about, right? You're angry and then you have angry thoughts, right? If you can remember at that point to wake up, right? And instead of staying with it, right? You recognize anger is almost never useful, right? Can only, it can be useful if you use it from an aware standpoint, but that's not the case for almost everybody. So for almost everybody, it's of no use at all. It's totally destructive and unnecessary. If you see that, and you drop the anger. In other words, you intentionally stop thinking about it. You redirect your attention, right? The anger's gotta disappear. So everybody has their own process. It's an interesting thing because everybody has their own process in terms of where you're at and what it's gonna take for you to gradually come to a place where you're willing to surrender to the truth, right? It's a process. You can't push the river. You can't make it happen before it's ready to happen, right? And you can see this in nature. You can't make a flower blossom before it's ready to blossom, right? But there's one difference between that world and the world of humanity, the human consciousness. The world of human consciousness is very, very interesting and unique in the sense that while on the one hand that's the case, that people can't be ready until they are, they can't be where they're at until they're ready to blossom, they can't wake up until they're ready to wake up, right? Just like a flower, right? On the other hand, at the same time, it can happen anytime, right? Because unlike the flower, see, the, the, flower, the flower is completely a progressive reality where it has to go through stages in order to blossom, right? But the human being is already what they are. Do you understand? In other words, the human being is different. The human being is already blossomed and it's in the process of blossoming at the same time. So you can either be in the process of blossoming, you can be in the process of waking up, and that process has to be respected, right? But at any time in that process, at any time in that process, you can actually totally go. 
you can actually totally wake up at any time in that process, unlike the flower, right? And that's what makes it interesting as far as I'm concerned because from a teaching perspective, on the one hand I respect the place that everybody is and the process that they're in to gradually come to terms with reality. On the other hand, I'm very interested in trying to find what the key is that if I could find it and turn it, right, if I could find, maybe this doesn't exist, I don't know, but I think it does. That if I could find the key and turn it, that I could turn it and all of you would be awake just like that. And so the thing about it is, and this is the thing that, that I suggest to you to consider, you know, because if it's true that you could, you could be self-realized at any time, because it's already the case, you're just, see, it's, it's already happening right now, you're just not there for it, right? That's the way it is, right? But it can, it can happen at any time, it can complete itself at any time. If that's the case, then the way for you to have that happen for yourself is you have to start paying attention to your awareness the way an athlete's paying attention to the ball, right? A, a baseball player, a football player, a tennis player, they're training in the game to have there be nothing more important than the ball, right? Where's the ball? right? What has to happen with the ball? That's the only thing, that's what their tunnel vision is in the game, right? So in your life, if you had that way of being in relationship to awareness, right? It would highly accelerate the process of realizing awareness, right? Because it would mean that as you were going through your life, you were always uh, you always had the view available to you of how what's happening would look from awareness. That's what it would, would mean. In the same way in a game, the player, the high performance player, has the view of the field, the view of what's happening that shows up when it's being seen from the point of view of the ball being the center of it all. Do you understand? That becomes that which determines the way everything else shows up, isn't it? On a football field, you're paying the way you're paying attention to the ball determines how the rest of it is showing up because it's all in relationship to what's happening with the ball, right? Same thing in life. If you know awareness is the heart of the matter, if you know awareness is the reality of what you are, if you know it's the final solution to your life, right? And you really have that conviction, you understand that, you appreciate that, then that's the ball. You keep your eye on the ball at all times, and that way of being, where you're keeping your eye on the ball, will have the way your life occurs, the way everything shows up, start to be referenced to that. Start to be appearing as a manifestation that's given by that, rather than given by what you're thinking, you see. That's why somebody who's a professional sports player, when they're in the game, the worst thing they could do is think. As soon as you think, you're, you're in trouble, right? And the reason you're in trouble is because you're removed, from rea you're removed from what's happening right now. And so now you have, the, uh, you have the obstacle in your performance that there's going to be a time delay between what you're thinking and what you can do, right? But things are happening too fast for that. So as soon as you think, somebody who's there that's not thinking and is present, right, they're going to be able to act where you can't act. It's like a, the, one of the famous hockey players said, um, I forget who, it, uh, who he was, a very famous ice hockey player. And he said, when I'm on the ice, what I'm doing is I, I'm looking to see where the puck is going to be. That's what I'm doing. Same thing in basketball. Basketball players, when they're on the court, right, they're anticipating where the ball's going next so they could be there. And just imagine what it would be like to be living your life like that, right? So, any other questions? I run, the thing that I want most is to have you be left with the sense of possibility. Like it's real, it's present, it's available to you right now. Are you willing to, are you willing to engage with that? Are you willing to engage with that? If you, if you are willing to engage with that and you understand that it's real and it's present right now, then meditation will have a particular importance, won't it? And the way that you're looking at what's going on in your life will take on a particular importance, right? Because now you're looking at it and seeing what would be different with this if I was awake right now. 
especially when you're getting bitten, right? Especially when you're in trouble, when you're upset emotionally, when things are going well, right? Instead of it just being shitty, now it's an opportunity for you to wake up and you look at that and you say, wow, I must not be awake. If I was awake, I would be able to be present to this in such a way where it wouldn't be hurting me this much. Okay, I'll see you all next time, which will be uh, Tuesday here in this room at 5.30. Have a great day.